Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm going to be uh, reading the word of God out of the Old Testament, uh, the first chapter of the book of Psalms. The first three verses, if we were to apply this to the New Testament church today, uh, the first three verses would apply to those that are called Christians, uh, the godly man, the godly woman, uh, the person that's born again from above. You see, there's only one kind of Christian that will go to heaven, and that is the born again kind, the born again Christian. And then verses 4 through 6 speak of the ungodly man or the ungodly woman. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whenever he does shall prosper. Now, verses 4 through 6 are for the ungodly person, the person that is not a born-again Christian. For the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. And therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Ladies and gentlemen, there's only, you see, the Bible says right here that if, if, if you are a Christian, you would be delighted in the law of the Lord. The Bible says that, that the law of God, God's law is written upon our hearts. And we all know that, that it's wrong to steal. We all know that it's wrong to covet. We all know that it's wrong to commit adultery or have premarital sex or fornication or to lust for somebody. And Jesus said in Matthew 5 that if you've even looked at anybody with lust in your heart, you have committed adultery. And you see, because we've all broken God's law, we will all have to answer to God one day when we die. It could be tomorrow in a car accident, I hope not, but it could be next week. It could be in some other tragedy, folks, but eventually we're all going to die. The Bible says that it's been appointed for man to die once, and then comes the judgment. But see, the good news is, those of us that do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. See, Jesus Christ can either be your, 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 your friend or, and, and, and your Lord and your Savior, or He will be the judge that will throw you into the lake of fire. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Yes, ma'am. I love your God. Are you, are you a minor? But I do not love your Christians. Okay, I don't want to talk to anybody that's not under... And by the way, if you're 18 years or older and you would like to talk to me, uh, I, ha I have uh, some gospel tracts I can give to you, and I'd be uh, I'd love to answer any of your questions you, you had, that uh, you might have of me. But folks, you see, the only way we can have reconciliation with God the Father is through His Son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the author and the finisher of our faith. You see, it says in John, the book, book of John, in the Gospel of John, that we can have a friend in Jesus Christ. We can actually be His friend. But if we're not born again, if we do not repent from our sins, and if we do not believe in the Gospel, then we will be a foe instead of a friend. So who is Jesus Christ going to be to you? Is He going to be your usually friendly person, or is He going to be your, your God? Is He going to be your enemy, uh, or is He going to be your friend, your Lord, and your Savior? You see, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but through me. He said we must be born again to inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says that our sins will kill us, but Jesus Christ can save you. The Bible says in Romans 6.23 that for the wages of our sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Hi, what are you doing there? So please, folks, take heed to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent from your sins and believe in the gospel. Repent from your sins, and that means to turn from your sins and turn to Christ. Jesus wants you to abide in Him as the branch on the vine. Jesus Christ is the true vine of life. 
and he's calling you to repentance. He's calling you to be cleansed by his blood. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins to the Lord Jesus Christ, he is faithful and just to cleanse you from all of your sins and all of your unrighteousness. You see, all of us are unrighteous unless we come to Christ on his terms. All of us are sinful until we come to Christ on his terms, on his terms. And then when he fills you with, your, with his Holy Spirit, he will empower you. He will indwell you with his Holy Spirit and he will empower you and give you the ability of resisting temptation. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that every one of you had been tempted with sin, but God has left an avenue of escape for every one of us. You see, we'll be without excuse on Judgment Day. God has left all of us an avenue of escape. And Jesus Christ is that avenue. Jesus Christ is the door of life. He is the light of this world. He is the Savior, the loving Savior, full of grace and mercy and love and compassion. And that's why I'm speaking with passion to you children and adults and ladies and gentlemen, staff, faculty, parents. Yes, I'm speaking to everybody here. Christ is coming soon. I'm pleading to you to believe, take heed to the message. And if you're 18 years or older, you have any questions about eternal life or salvation, please come over. I'd love to talk to you. I'll be here for a little bit. Thank you so much. God bless you.